Okay, so let's first check if you really have a bad shock absorber. Do you see a oil leak? Where do you usually park your car? Are your shocks looking like this? All oily and dirty? This is an indicator that you need to replace them. And also, if you can do this to your car, this is way too much bouncing around. So if you're driving with shocks like this, your ride is not stable in the corners, you can feel uh, that the car will lean too much in the corner. Okay, so for this job, you will need Now let's start to remove the wheels. With the 17 socket, let's loosen it a bit and then let's lift this side of the car with our car jack. Now that our car is in the air, let's secure with another jack or you can also put the wheel under there. I always try even to shake the car that I see if the car is not stable on the jacks. Let's remove the wheel with the 17 socket. Also, I'm making this fast, otherwise the video would be too long. Now we have a full view of the shock absorber. Okay, stop a bit, attention. There's no need to remove the inner liner, also the, the protecting plastic. I'm removing it because I wanted to clean it, otherwise you can just loosen the two uh, bolts on the 16 and you get the shock out. Okay. So when removing the inner plastics, let's take the Torx T20 and remove the screws. There should be 10 screws. You can now remove the two bolts with the 16 mm socket. Down here. Now you can take the socket or a ring or open end wrench and loosen the bolt and the nut. Here we can see we need to lift the arm up so much, then the ball get loose. So then you can pull out the ball to its no problem. Now let's remove the upper two bolts. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Shut. Yo, this is the original shock assembly. So after 260,000 km, it's better to replace everything with the shocks. The bushings are also bad. For the new shocks I choose Monroe, great shocks for a great price, with the new Miley upper bushings. The new shock is secure, so we'll need to re remove the safety clip, just remove the nut and slides out the wire. Now let's Hello. assemble the foam and the cover first, push it in that it will pops and you are done. And now just slide on the rod of the shock absorber. And at the end put the upper bushing on and tighten the 16mm nut with help of pliers and a ring wrench. No. I also assembled both of the shocks assembly, but I didn't record them because it's the same. We just need one thing from the old assembly, the cap. Take off the old assembly and put on the new one. And now we just need to put everything in reverse, take the 16 millimeter and the bolts and screw it on. Now use the car jack and lift the control arm to the high that you can then just insert the bolt. Take your 16mm again and tighten the bolt and the nut. And there you go, one side is finished, looking good. Let's just fast install our inner liner.
Let's put the wheel down just slightly on the ground enough that you can torque range the wheel at 140 Newton meter. One side is now completely finished. Let's go to the other side. For this side I will fast forward it because it's the same on both sides. The only difference is if you are removing the inner plastic lining, uh, as I'm doing, you need to watch out for this tube. If you get it loose, you just need to attach it back. This is that the rain and the fuel are collecting in the space behind the filling door between the cap, so the access fluid gets drained down. This is just the drain block or the drain tube. Don't forget to put all the screws back in. Now let's go back to the car and see how much it bounces now. Thank you for watching. Bye.